most security cameras do one job. They capture video and possibly audio, and if you're really lucky, they'll let you talk back. However, in terms of actual deterrence to keeping people off of your property, sometimes just the sight of the camera isn't enough. The BR200 from Ank, that's Ank, not Anker, A-N-N-K-E, is a 2 megapixel 1080p analog security camera. Nothing remarkable there, except for its one superpower. It includes a built-in siren and a red and blue flashing light. Now, if that doesn't put off the potential intruders, I don't know what will. Join me, James Bruce, with MakeYouself.com reviews as I take a closer look at the Ankh BR200. Now, just to emphasize one point that this is an analog security camera, which means that it requires BNC cabling uh, to a digital video recorder such as this. Now, don't let the word analog put you off too much. It generally means that you're going to get more reliable video transmission without any additional overhead on your network. And if you have uh, a number of video cameras, that can really add up. IP cameras, especially wireless ones, do sometimes suffer from connectivity issues, while uh, analog cameras being hardwired, of course, they're pretty much, they're just plugged in through a wire, so they're not going to uh, fall over and disconnect at some point, uh, unless rats chew through your cables, uh, which does happen. However, you will need a video recorder of some sort to test it with. Ank sent me this uh, basic four camera model with one terabyte hard drive. I think this only costs around $60 direct from them, so it's well worth it. Now also, if you were concerned that being sort of plain old analog meant that you wouldn't get any of those uh, networked features, then again, don't worry. Even this basic box has a network connection which goes through to their app and in theory, you should get notifications. I wasn't able to get that work. However, you can use the app to check the feeds at any time and go through any recorded events. So the camera itself has some flexibility when it comes to video output. Although it's strictly not for direct network connection, you can't just plug this into your router. It does support a variety of different video output formats, including TVI, AHD, CVI, and CVBS. So regardless of which digital video recorder you happen to pair it with, if you have a preference for some other maker or model there, uh, then it should work fine with that. In terms of design, the BR200 looks like any other security camera. It's not too big, it's not too boxy, it's actually quite rounded. It doesn't look bad at all, but neither is it particularly remarkable. The camera itself is IP67 rated, so you can of course mount this outdoors for which it's primarily designed. However, there's nothing to stop you mounting this indoors either, uh, in a warehouse or such, if you want something uh, sort of with a siren and flashy lights indoors. Looking at the front, you'll see that the BR200 also features an actual motion sensor rather than your system having to rely on the movement of the video, which can often cause uh, false alarms. So using this, it's only going to detect when actual moving objects, moving humans, for instance, maybe animals as well, depending on how much you how high you set the sensitivity, uh, but it's going to have a lot less false alarms, uh, in fact none when I was testing it, uh, than other security cameras certainly do. Which is good because the alarm is really, really loud. Also included is a basic white light, and they call this a smart light feature. So this means that any recordings that you do will be in full colour rather than the infrared of most security cameras, although it also means that you'll have a light on permanently. Of course, you can configure that, disable it, set it onto a schedule, etc. The main feature, though, as I mentioned, is that it has a built-in red and blue bright strobe light. And this is certainly unique from what I can tell. Now, normally you'd expect these sort of features and configuring them to have a uh, network sort of option where you could log into the camera and then uh, change the options like that. However, of course, this is an analog camera, so there is no network connection and there's no other way to get data through it. Instead, it relies on this really unique interface where the menu is stored within the camera itself and you can navigate that menu uh, using the pan, tilt and zoom features that are standard across analog security cameras. So there's actually a sort of whole operating system built into this camera itself. And that's how they managed to put some really advanced features onto what would otherwise be a very basic analog camera. Installing the camera is easy, but not quite as easy as I was expecting. See, although they supply this fairly long sort of 25-30 meter cable for DC and uh, BNC video, 
you can't actually use the power part of this. It needs to be plugged directly into a power socket. And that's because this type of cabling is awfully thin and just not rated to the high power requirements of this camera. When I initially installed it and just used this as anyone would, I expect, it's not really uh, detailed in the manual that you shouldn't, um, the video cut out whenever the alarm turned on. And that is pretty much precisely what you don't want a video security camera to do. Essentially, because of the length, it's not rated to that voltage. So the voltage drops a certain amount over a length of cable. That's always true, but normally it doesn't matter. With this camera, because of the loud siren and the flashing strobe lights, it needs as much of that voltage as it can get. And on this particular cable, it doesn't work. So you do need to plug it directly into a wall socket. Now, the fact that this isn't outlined in the manual somewhere it does worry me a little because if you'd have just wired this up as normal and then thought, oh yes, the alarm's going off without actually checking the footage, uh, you might not know this until it was too late. Now, ANC have assured me that they will be supplying actual power extension cables in future, so you can install this camera remotely. However, I feel like they could fix that just from the start by simply supplying a cable that is rated to a good enough voltage. For instance, this cable that I have is significantly thicker. I bought this for testing some previous stuff. It's about 50 meters of length, so really quite long, but as you can see, the cable itself is a lot thicker. Now, when I tested with this, it worked absolutely fine. As it should, the alarm went off and the video continued to be transmitted. So it is possible it does work, just not with the particularly thin cable that they've supplied. And I should add that the cable they supplied is covered with plastic, the type of plastic which rats absolutely love. I know this from experience. So accessing the camera feed is relatively easy if you're using uh, their DVR box as supplied. Obviously this will depend on which box that you're using, but with this it was pretty easy. There's a mobile app which you can download, just log in there, connect it up to your system, and then you can view the live feeds and past event. Viewing it directly on the box itself, if you've got an HDMI monitor hooked up, is even easier. There is also a Windows app, though I didn't get around to testing that. The interface on this digital video recorder um, is, however, very basic and very clunky. It's not at all intuitive to figure out the settings or anything outside of basic live viewing uh, and viewing past events. It's also not helped by the fact that on the DVR interface, you'll find a lot of references to alarm. Now, when you see this, it doesn't actually relate to the alarm on your camera, because as I said, the alarm for this is managed entirely within this camera itself on the menu within here it doesn't relate to the box at all. So that can get a bit confusing and a bit disjointed. In addition, there's just language dodginess all over the interface. Things like arming schedule, trigger channel, and linkage action. It may take a while to decipher all of that language and figure out exactly what it is that you're looking for to configure. Initial configuration for me did take quite a while. And frankly, I just expect better from consumer products in 2020. Setting up the advanced features of this camera, as I mentioned, is done using a menu system that's built into it itself. I'm actually quite impressed with this. It seems like they are really pushing the limits of what an analog security camera should be capable of. But on the other hand, it seems to be solving a problem that there wouldn't be if it was just an IP camera in the first place. It's certainly an innovative and different approach that I haven't seen before, so I can applaud them for that. In terms of image quality, it's not fantastic, but it's about what I'd expect from an analog 1080p camera. Nothing remarkable there, and the, there's no audio. Now, despite the clunkiness of the analog system, the fact it can't be powered over this cheap cable, I have to say that the flashing red and blue lights that you'll find on here uh, do seem like they would have a, a profound psychological impact uh, on any intruder that was trying to get into your home. Obviously the, the red and blue that sort of looks like police have arrived already, even though they obviously haven't, it's just that effect that it would have on them that I think would be pretty significant. And as I said, the siren can get really, really loud. I've brought the volume down for the sake of the video and I hadn't dared put it above low, even that was quite loud. So should you buy the Ankh? BR200 analog security camera system with built-in strobe and siren. Well, while I can't fault the design of the camera at all, it's unremarkable but looks like a security camera and is waterproof for outdoor mounting. 
nor can I fault the inherent features, the siren and the flashing lights. The rest of the package, unfortunately, just isn't that good. The fact that the cable that they supply is too thin to actually supply the needed voltage makes installation a bit awkward unless you're gonna stretch for a thicker cable which can handle it. And the interface on the DVR is just incredibly clunky and not something that I'd expect to be using in the year 2020. The mobile app seems to work fine for viewing live streams and past events. I think if you already have an analog security camera system set up that perhaps you're not quite pleased with the quality of, uh, maybe there's some older cameras, but you're more familiar with the interface on that, so you'd like to keep the DVR, but just upgrade a couple of the cameras, especially for the reliable motion detection and siren with flashing strobe lights, then this is probably a pretty good option. At less than $100, they represent pretty good value for the fact that they're basically an alarm system built in and not just the basic security camera. In that case, these are well worth it. But if you're building a new system out from scratch, um, there's really no way that I could recommend these. Yes, the built-in features are cool, but the package as a whole, the fact that the right cables aren't supplied, the interface on the DVR is just too clunky, I couldn't recommend this. Instead, I would probably say invest a little bit more in a reliable IP camera system. There are just more user-friendly systems available that will give you less hassle to install and maintain and actually use. Yes, this is cheap, but once you factor in the additional time and labor that you'll be spending on getting it set up and figuring out why it hasn't recorded properly, um, I think it's probably worth putting in a bit more money to buy a better option. And there are, of course, the usual downsides to analog security cameras. Despite being uh, pretty much the smartest analog security camera you'll find on Earth, it does still require a specific box in order to record or view anything from it. You can't just download the app and use it with this. It still needs to be fed into the back of one of these before any of those features will work. In addition, if you have a smart or IP camera, generally they have the option to record video directly to the camera itself through a micro SD card slot. So in addition to whatever you have set up locally, either on your computer or on your network attached storage to record from it, should one of those fail, you probably still have a backup copy on the camera itself. With this, um, if the cable is cut or if the video footage is corrupted on the DVR, then you're left with nothing. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that's given you a good overview of the Ankh BR200 and whether it's a suitable analog security and alarm system for your home or business. As ever, please hit like and consider subscribing if this review was helpful to you. And thank you to Ankh who have kindly provided another BR200 and one of these basic four camera DVRs for one lucky viewer. Just head on over to the link in the description and enter your details at the end of the full review page and you'll be in with a chance to win. And please do consider subscribing for more weekly reviews, uh, gadget giveaways, tutorials, and more from all of us at makeuseof.com. Until next time.